Hello students, welcome back to the next uh, new videos on the chapter number on the topic that is gravitational chapters. One of the gravitational chapters we have completed a lot about the topics and in, pre in, a, in the previous video we have discussed about the buoyancy. Okay, based on this buoyancy in this video lectures we will discuss the most important topic that is called Archimedes principle. What is Archimedes principle? What does it mean by the Archimedes principles? Okay, where it is used and how this who give who give these principles? Okay, you might have heard about the Archimedes principles. Okay, Archimedes principles are given by the uh, a Greek scientist that is what you call Archimedes. Okay, then a Greek scientist name that is called Archimedes. He a Greek scientist the Archimedes give this principle is Archimedes principles. Okay, so before we go into this, okay, in a previous topic in the buoyancy, we have discussed, uh, under the buoyancy, we have discussed that whenever we apply the force, whenever we put the water into the liquid, okay, whenever in the liquid, if we put some offset, okay, this buoyancy, the buoyant force, okay, the buoyant force, the buoyant force, the point for us, or we get so up, up cross force. Okay, or you can say up cross applied by the waters of the object. It depend on whom it depend on the densities of an object. If your density of an object is less, then the then the uh, uh, buoyant force that means object is going to be the object is going to be float on the waters. But if the density of the object is more than the buoyant force, that means object is going to sink into the waters. We have discussed this in the previous video lecture. Okay, in the previous video lecture, we have discussed that. This is what we have discussed in the previous video lecture. Okay, so based on this, today we will be discussing about this uh, Archimedes principles. Okay, so one thing we also learned that okay, buoyant force, whatever the object that you immerse on it, whatever you object that you put into the waters. Okay, uh, so the object. The object, if you're putting, if you're putting the object here, okay, the force will be applying. So whatever the object that you put on it, okay, whatever the object that you put on it, okay, the object that you put on it, that must amounts of force will be applied downward with the help of gravitationness. Okay, if you're applying an object here, if you're putting an object here, let's say this is an object. According to the weight of this object, the weight of this object is the force that is applying. Weight of the object is the force that is applying. Weight of the object that is weight of the object that is m into g. Okay, m into g. Weight of this object. Okay, that is the downward force applied by the object downward. Okay, the force applied by the downward is the weight of an object. Okay, so how much weight has it been applied? That much amount of force will be applied back by these waters, okay, in the upward in the opposite direction. Okay, so if the weight of the object is more than the up, uh, buoyant force, that means object is going to sink into the waters. Okay, but if the object applied less force, that means the weight of the object is less than the buoyant force, okay, that means object is either going to sink or either going to, uh, it may be either like, what is that? It may be floating on the waters. Okay, so that is what we have learned in the previous video like church. Okay, today we will be discussing, based on this Archimedes principle, let's try to discuss more details about the Archimedes principle. What does an Archimedes principle say? Okay, you see, an object is wholly or partially immersed in a liquid. It experiences a buoyant force. That is what we have discussed in the previous topic also. Okay, so here we will discuss only the one that is, let's say, this is an object, this is a container. This is a container. Okay, so this, this, is, a, uh, this is our liquid waters. Okay, so this is our container, this is our liquid. Down here we have a liquid out here. Okay, so what is it? When the object is wholly Okay, that means full. It is totally immersed. It is put into the water. We will not be dealing, okay, with is floating on the waters. Okay, with is floating on the waters. We will not be dealing with a topic that is floating. That's the layers, the water layers here. It is floating on the water. You will not be discussing. It may be either partially or it may be either 
It may be either personally in this way, okay, it may be either personally immersed into the waters, or it may be fully and wholly immersed into the liquid. Okay, we will not be discussing who is who is floating on the surface of the water. We are not going to discuss on this topic. Okay, we are going to discuss on the topic which is either wholly, that means what? Full. It is totally submerged, submerged. Okay, it is totally immersed in the liquid, or personally, that means how part of this liquid have been immersed. Okay, so that is what it said. When an object is either wholly or personally immersed in a liquid, this object, this object will experience a buoyant force. This object will experience a buoyant force. Okay, this object will experience a buoyant force. So this object will experience a buoyant force. Whenever the object is either partially or fully immersed into the waters, okay, this object is going to experience a buoyant force. Okay. So what is it? When the object is partially or wholly immersed in a liquid, it experiences a buoyant force. Okay. Buoyant force. This object, if I say this is an object, this is an object. Okay, this is an object A. This is an object A. This object when it is immersed into the liquid, the object, okay, will experience the buoyant force. That means the force applied by the liquid on this. Okay, they will apply a force on this. Okay, the force, let's say this buoyant force FB, that is buoyant force. Okay, the buoyant force which is equal to the weight of an, weight of the, okay, which is equal to the weight of the object, of which is equal to the weight of an object. This must, let's say, what is the weight of this object? Let's say this force is what applying, okay, the weight, okay. So the force which is applied, the force which is applied on this, okay, the force which is applied on this, okay, will be exactly equal to the weight of this, okay. To the weight of the liquid displaced by the object again. Okay, so he will try to apply if the weight, if the weight of the force, okay, if the weight of the buoyant object and the weight of the buoyant force are equal, okay, they somehow personally some rest. But if the object, okay, if the weight of the object is less than the buoyant force, that means object is totally going to sink on the surface of the water. Okay, but if the object, weight of the object is totally uh, it is less, uh, more than the buoyant force, that this object is going to sink into the waters. Okay, so what does this you see? The weight, okay, the buoyant force which is equal to the weight, the buoyant force which is equal, which is equal to the weight, is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced by the object. Okay, do you know what is displaced by the object? Okay, the buoyant force will apply a force okay which is equal to the weight of a liquid which is equal to the weight is equal to the weight to the liquid of okay so which is equal to, which is equal to the weight is equal to the weight of a liquid okay equal to the weight is equal to the weight of a liquid displaced by the object so whenever you apply the force on it whenever you have, whenever you put the object into the into the waters okay the more the object you displace okay based on this some waters will get displaced it will get removed of you might have come across let's take one example okay let's take one example now if this is the object uh, liquid now if i try to fill up the water switch okay this is the containers Okay, this is a container. Now, if I'm going to put a wall, if I'm going to put a stone here, when the moment you put the stone in it, some water is going to displace out of it. Some water is going to displace out. Am I right? Some water is going to displace out. Right? The more the weight it is, that much amount of weight of the liquid will be displaced out. Okay, so that is what it said. Express the buoyant force which is equal to the weight is equal to the weight of a liquid displaced by the object the object that you put okay the moment you put the water into the liquid uh, uh, the object that you put okay into the liquid whenever you, when you put the object into the liquid that much amount of 
that mass amounts of liquid will be displaced okay that mass amounts of liquid will be displaced okay so that is what is said okay the buoyant force okay so that is what is Archimedes principle said okay the Archimedes principle said Archimedes principle said okay the Archimedes principle said whenever the object is either wholly or partially immersed into the liquid that object will experience the buoyant force and that buoyant force will be equal to the weight that is equal to the weight displaced by the equal to the weight that is that is equal to the weight is equal to the weight of a liquid displaced by the uh, displaced how much weight how much the moment you put the water is an object in it how much water have been displaced what is the weight of that waters according to that weight of the waters it will it will it will displace okay let's try to see one more example let's try to make it more clear okay let's try to make it one more clear now let's let us take one containers okay let us take one containers let us take one containers here okay you see these are two containers okay these are the two containers okay so what happened at the very beginning i will take the containers okay then i will make some holes out here okay i'll make the holes and on the levels of the waters i'll try to put okay these levels you see this is your level i think you can see it right this is the level that i'm going to put the waters up to the levels up to this level that you can see that's the level a okay from this to the water is filled up to the level a, level a okay this point now i'm planning to put one five kgs of stone in it okay so the moment i put the five kgs of stone okay that must amount the moment i put the stone into the into the what is it into the waters i will let it immerse okay so the moment i put the stone into the into the liquid okay then it's that must amount some amount will be will come out from the from, from the containers you know do you come across yes okay the moment if i put the stone in it okay some amount of waters will will remove right it will come out of the containers okay so i will try to do one thing since i'm doing the practical so what should i do is that how much amount of water is uh is what is it it's been removed of or it's been displaced i'm going to collect it in. okay i know that this is a five kg okay i know that this is a five kg okay then i will try to collect the stone i will try to collect the waters and i will try to i will try to then I will try to do one thing is that I will try to collect it, the waters whenever we the mass uh, the, the which have been displaced by the stone. Okay. Then I will try to weigh it. Okay. And if I found this way, let's say I'm waiting on a machine. Okay, weighing machine. Okay. So if I found a two kg of the water, it is a it is nearly one kg or two kg. Okay. That means that mass amount of buoyant force is applied on the object. That mass amounts of buoyant forces apply on the object. Okay, that means what? The buoyant force will be equal to the amount of water or the weight of the water that been dis displaced by that object. Okay, that is what Archimedes principles have taught. Okay, Archimedes principles said the amount the buoyant force which have been applied, the buoyant force which has been applied on object whenever the object immerses personally is the holy okay that object will experience a buoyant force and that buoyant force will be equal to the weight of the water that has been displaced by the object okay so now you see since i apply if i since i put this five kgs of five kgs of stone okay now how much kgs of water does i get only two kgs of water that means what weight of the object weight of the object is less than is greater than one uh, weight of the ob uh, weight of the uh, force applied by that weight of the object is greater than weight of the buoyant force right this is a buoyant force that is 2 kg now if the weight of the object is greater than weight of the buoyant force that means the object is going to submerge the object is going to the object is going to sink into the waters or not yes the object is going to sink into the waters but if i say the object is uh, which is of two kgs or you can say three one kg uh, one kgs of water if i just 
the moment if I throw the stone, but that much amounts of okay, two kgs of water have been displaced by this stone. That means the weight of the object is less than weight of the buoyant force. That means the object is going to sink partially. Okay, that object is going to sink only partially. Means some amounts of the object will be floating in this way. Ah, it will not go into the water, so it will not go into the on the surface. So it will be sinking. Some part will be sinking. Okay, some part will be sinking. Okay, so that is what Archimedes principles have said. Okay, the Archimedes principle has said that when a body is immersed fully or partially, or you can say when a body is uh, when the object or a body is immersed partially or wholly, okay, in a in a liquid, it experiences a upward force. It experiences the upward force that is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. That is, ex experience the upward buoyant force, what you call buoyant force, or you also call as the upward force, okay, which is equal to the weight, which is equal to the weight. I'm sorry, I'm re rewrote this together again. Okay, which is equal to the weight, which is equal to the weight, which is equal to the weight of a liquid displaced by the object. Okay, I repeat, I rewrite this again. Which explains the buoyant force, which is equal to the weight of a liquid, to the weight of the liquid displaced by who? By the object. That is what Archimedes principle says. Okay, but here you see, based on this Archimedes principles, okay, many application, many object, okay, many technologies and many. Uh, of the uh, substances, okay, many uh, applications, okay, based on this Archimedes principle, we 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 have developed many applications, okay. Let, let's take examples. Let's say this is the ocean waters, okay. So if I throw the stone or if I throw the iron nails in it, okay, the small iron nail in it, okay, this iron nail was sink into the waters, yes, no, but whereas if I see. A seat, okay, or a boat, it keeps floating in the waters. Okay, it keeps floating in the waters. Why? You see, this iron, okay, the iron, it is totally compact. Okay, the, the, the iron is what it is totally compact. Okay, they are totally, they have no hollow, there is no space in it. Okay, it is totally compact. Due to which, whenever you apply the force on it, the buoyant force, their force become more as compared to the force of the liquid. Okay, so based on these Archimedes uh, principles, okay, we start developing that. We start developing a seat. Okay, so whenever you apply the force, whenever you apply the force, the Archimedes principle. Okay, so most of the board, this this part is totally hollow. Okay, that means it's empty. Okay, it is empty, and because of these Archimedes principles, okay. They don't sink into the water, instead they keep on sailing in the waters. Okay. So whenever they keep on sailing in the water, some part of the some part of the ship got sink into the waters, not fully. Okay, so this is all about uh, Archimedes principles. Okay, with the Archimedes principles, uh, principles have many applications. Okay, it is mostly used in designing the ships and submarine. Okay, lactometers. Okay, some other lactometer which are used for determining the Purities of the water, uh, purities of the meal. Okay, so uh, based on Archimedes principles, okay, we have uh, like different application based on this Archimedes principle. You will be learning more detail in the higher classes only. Okay, so based on this Archimedes principle, designing of ship, designing of ship, okay, and submarines have been taken place. Okay, so lactometers, okay, lactometers, lacto. L-S-E-T-O-M-E-T-L Lactometers also work on this principle in order to purify what? In order to purify purifity, purities of the waters in order to purify the puri purify purify the purify the meal Okay, in order to purify the meal these lactometers also work on the principles of buoyant force Okay, and hydrometers is also used to determine Okay, another one is that in order to determine the densities of the density of the liquid Hydrometers, hydrometers, okay, hydrometers, waters, meters. In order to, in order to measure the densities of the waters, okay, densities of the waters, densities of the waters, okay, 
In order to determine the densities of the waters, okay, we also we also depend the density of waters or density of liquid. Okay, we all these objects are depending on the Archimedes principles. Clear about this one? Okay, now let's go to the last topic that is what we call a relative density. Okay, Sears. The last topic that we are discussing is about that we are going to discuss is about the relative densities. Okay, so before we discuss about the re relative densities, let's try to understand what is densities. Okay, re density is what? What is the density? Okay, density of a substance is defined as the mass of the mass mass of a unit volumes. Okay, mass of a unit volumes is what we call as a density. Okay, density is what mass of the unit volumes is what they call as a is mass of the Mass per unit volumes is what we call as the density. Okay, mass per unit the density of the particular substance is what mass per unit volumes. Okay, so SI unit of mass per unit volumes is what density is what SI unit of density is what SI unit of density is what SI unit of density is what meter uh, mass is what kg and Density of unit of volume is what meter cubes. Okay, so SI unit of density is what meter kg meter kg per meter cubes. Okay, kg per meter cubes. Okay, so SI unit of density is what kg meter per cube. So what is the density? It's meant it, it defines the compactness. Okay, it defines the compactness of that particular object. Okay, how much compact it is that define the density. Okay, so density is what density is what mass per unit volumes. Okay, it define the compactness of that object. Okay, you can say compact. How much compact it is? How much feel it is? Okay, so it define the compactness of the object. So in general, in the science term, okay, we say mass per unit volumes. Okay, mass per unit volumes. Okay, now let's talk about relative densities. Okay, Rel density we have learned about. We have known what is density. A density is what mass per unit volume. Now, what is relative density? You can understand what is the meanings of a relative. Okay, relative is what we are going to compare between two quantities. Okay, so you see, if I say this is an object, object A, let's say this is an object A. Okay, and this is an object B. Okay, so you want to compare between these two the mass of an object A, okay, mass of an object A, and mass of the object B. Okay, you're, you're comparing with these two objects. Okay, so that of that comparison in the term of density is what we call as a relative density. Okay, so relative density is a ratio. Okay, it's a ratio that compare between the two different substances. Okay, relative density of the of, of an object is what? Relative density is what? Relative density of an object is what? Relative density of an object is what? Is comparing between the density of that particular object. Of the uh, uh, between the two objects, okay, comparing the density between the two different objects, okay. But what is the relative density of the substances, okay? So, relative density of the substances are always calculated in this way relative densities, okay, relative densities of the substances, relative density of uh, of the substances, okay, substances is always equal to what. Mass and uh, relative density of the substances, density of the substances, density of the substances divided by what? Relative density of the substances divided by density of the density of oven waters. Okay, density of the waters. That means if I want to find the relative density of any substance, we have to compare with the density of the waters. Okay, so this ratio, the relative density, SI unit of relative density is. There is no unit. Okay, this is a ratio. No unit. No unit. Why? Because it is a comparing quantity. It is a comparing quantity. There is no unit. No SI unit. Okay. So since it is a comparing quantity, there is no SI unit. Okay. So this is what we are talking about. We have discussed about more about the Boyan Archimedes principle, and we also have learned the relative densities. Okay. So that's. Uh, that is the end of the topic. That is the end of the entire chapters. Okay, go through the video lectures as much as possible. If you have any problem, you can directly contact with me. Anyway, stay safe. Bye bye.